Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and we are going to do the 10-5 lesson today. And this is on angle relationships in circles, so it kind of continues on with what we did with 10-4. So let's get started. Um, one thing I do suggest, and I, I know that now it's online stuff, I still suggest that uh, if you can, make sure you do these warm-ups. Um, they're always good, and it's a good check to see if you, uh, you're understanding. Okay, for the first theorem... Uh, this one is the tangent and intersected chord theorem, and it says, if a tangent and a chord intersect at a point in a circle, so here's the tangent, there's the chord, and they intersect at this point, then the measure of each angle formed is one-half the measure of the intercepted arc. So if we take a look at the situation, here's the tangent, there's the chord. So if a tangent intersects a chord, then the measure of angle 1 will be half of whatever arc AB is. So for example, if arc AB, so if the measure of arc AB right here is equal to, say, 100, then the measure of angle 1 would equal half that 100, which would be 50. So it would be 50. And same thing on the other side. We could just take a look at this. Here's angle 2. Angle 2 will be half whatever arc, and this time we're going to say BCA because it's a larger arc there. Okay, so then the next one that we can talk about is the intersecting lines and circles. So for this one, there's three different possibilities when two lines that are not parallel intersect in a circle. Well, with a circle. So they can intersect on the circle like this. So he's, here's two lines that intersect on it. Here's two lines that intersect inside. And then here's two lines that intersect outside. So there's three possible situations that can happen. Now each of these, you'd be able to find, say, this arc, or these arcs, or this arc over here. So there are formulas to solve those, and we're going to learn the formulas right now. So the first one that we're going to start off with is if you have the two lines that intersect inside the circle. So here they are, they're intersecting inside the circle, and you can, they don't have to be lines, they could just be chords that intersect inside the circle. And um, these are secants, remember secants go all the way through. So here's what happens when they intersect inside. This angle one is gonna be one half the sum of the two arcs. So I would have to add up arc AB, plus arc CD, take that sum, divided by 2, that's what angle 1 is. Now, if I called this angle 2 in here, say, it would be the same as angle 1, because those are vertical angles. So these angles in here are going to be half the sum of whatever AB plus the CD are. And here's that formula. Now, let's move on to the next case. Suppose you had a secant and a tangent. In other words, in this one, they're going to intersect outside, outside, and outside the circle. Well, if they intersect outside the circle, there's three possibilities. One of them is, is a secant, such as this, and a tangent. Both of them can be tangents, or both of them can be secants. And we have formulas for each one of these, but the formulas are similar. So let's talk about what those are. So here's the first situation, where they intersect outside the circle, and you have a tangent and a secant. Well, the measure of this angle right here that's formed, angle 1, is going to be 1 half arc AD minus BD. Let's see how that differs from above. If they intersect inside, you add and take half. If they intersect outside, you'll subtract these two arcs and take half. Again, if it's on the inside, you add the two arcs and take half that for the angle. If it's on the outside, you subtract the two arcs. Now, you're always going to subtract the larger arc minus the smaller arc and take half that, and that'll be the angle. Same situation here. Big arc minus the small is that angle. Big arc minus the small is going to be this angle. So whether there are two tangents, two secants, or a secant and a tangent, the formula is the same, and it's going to be the measure of the angle will be one-half the big arc 
minus the small arc. And this is if they intersect outside. If they intersect inside, it's going to be one half big plus small, or you could say small plus big. It doesn't matter since uh, you're adding. All right, let's uh, take a look at what we have next. And if you have the situation where you have the two tangents like this, this is called a circumscribed angle. So a cir circumscribed angle is an angle whose sides are tangent to a circle. So if you see this terminology, you understand what that means. And then we have a theorem that goes with it, the circumscribed angle theorem. Well, if I do this and do that, guess what I've formed here? If I make radii to those tangents, well, these end up being right angles, right angles. And so we can solve for the measure of angle A, D, B right here because it'll just be 180 minus the measure of angle A, C, B. So you can ask yourself, why is this? Well, let's take a look at why this works. Over here, look at you have from A, D, B, C, you formed a quadrilateral, right? And a quadrilateral adds up to be 360 when you add up the angles. Well, two of these are 90. So there's 90, 90, 180. So what do you have left for these two angles in here? 180. So 180 minus whatever one of them happens to be is going to be the other one. So that's how this theorem works. All right, moving on. Let's take a look. Here's a summary of what we just did. The first one is if you have your point on a circle, well, if it's on a circle, and we've talked about this before, you're just going to take half whatever this arc is, right? Because that's like an inscribed angle. So here's a situation where it's on a circle, whether it's two secants or a secant and a tangent, you're going to take half this arc, this intercepted arc. So the measure of angle 1 here would be half of 120, which is 60. The measure of angle 2 here would be half of 200, which is 100. If it's inside the circle, we're going to take these two, add them, and divide by 2. So here's an example. We have 44 plus 86. Half that is 65. That's what angle 1 is. And that's what this angle in here is also because that's a vertical angle. And then if you have the point on outside the circle, whether it's two tangents, whether it's a secant and a tangent, or whether it's two secants, it's the, the formula is the same. You're going to say big arc minus the small arc, half of that. Big arc minus the small arc, half of that. So big minus the small, half would give you this value. Big minus the small, half would give you that value. So that's a summary of all of them that we have learned today. So open up your student journals and let's do um, page 302, examples one through nine. Okay, for number one, uh, it says, uh, for one to three, uh, CD is a tangent. So line CD is a tangent to the circle. Find the indicated measure. Okay, so for this one, we have to find A, uh, angle ABC on this side right here. So I know if this angle on this side is 70, that means this angle, this is 180, right? Linear pair straight angle. So this angle has to be 110. Okay, then the measure of arc AB. So we're taking a look at arc AB. If the angle 70, the arc is double that. Remember, the angle is half the intercepted arc, so the arc will be 140 degrees. Then we need arc AEB, and that's on this side, AEB. And we said if this angle in here was 110, then that means this arc right here will be double that because the angle is half the arc, so this arc will be double, so this will be 220 degrees. All right, moving on to number four. So we have the measure of angle ADB is 220, so ADB, that's this one right here. And I think I said angle, but I meant that uh, it's the arc, so arc AD, 
to be this arc right in here. So that's 220. So we could fill that out right there. And we know that angle B, they tell us, right in here is 21 degrees. So for problem number four, it says find the measure of arc AB. So we have to find arc AB on this side right here. So what I want to do is I want to fill out things that we know right now um, that we can conclude. So they told me, though, that uh, over here, ADB is 220. If this is 21 right in here, this angle B is 21, that means this arc in here will be double that, which is 42, right? An inscribed angle, the arc is double. Now, here's the other thing. If they told me that ADB is... 220, then 360 minus the 220 would give me 140. So this arc right in here from A to B on this side, like that, that's 140 degrees. So the 220 plus the 140. So now here's what I can do. I can solve for arc AB just what I, what I just did, which was 140 degrees. Now I can get angle ACB. That's this one right here, A, C, B, A, C, B. By using, the form, by using the formula that here's the angle, right? You have the big arc minus the small arc. Half of that will be this angle. So here's the big arc. There's the small arc. One half of it will be this angle, A, D, C or A, sorry, ACB. So let's write that up. Let's see how we're gonna put that together. We're gonna say that it's going to be one half, so this equals one half of 140 minus the 42. Because remember, if it intersects on the outside, you're gonna take big arc minus the small arc, half of that. So working this out, 140 minus the 42 is 98 and half of 98 is going to be 49. So it's 49 degrees in there. All right, let's move on and see what we got next. For numbers uh, 6, 7, 8, and 9, we need to find the value of x, and these are just using the rules that we have been taught. And here's x, so they intersect on the inside, so I'm going to add the two arcs. So x is equal to one half of the sum of 50 plus the 92. So x will be uh, 50 plus the 92 would come out to be 142. And half of 142 comes out to be 71. So x is equal to 71 degrees. All right, moving on to the next one, number seven. Let's take a look. We've got this angle in here is 5x plus 14. We can solve for this angle, I'll call it angle one, right? Um, and then we can do 180 minus that uh, to find out what the x would be in there. So let's just go ahead and do that. The measure of angle one that I created in here is one half of 97 plus the 35. So the measure of angle one would be one half of 132. So that's going to be, the measure of angle 1 would be 66. So this is 66 degrees in here. So 66 degrees plus the 5x plus 14 degrees is going to be a total of 180. And now I can go through and solve for x. So I will get 5x plus 66 and 14 is 80 equals 180. So 5x equals 100. So x will be 20. All right, let's take a look at the next ones here. Um, we've got two more to do. Uh, number eight, it says we have a point here outside, so we're going to take the big arc minus the small arc. So that would give us 38 equals one half of the big arc, x minus the small arc, 72. Now, there's a couple different ways you can solve this. I like to personally multiply everything by 2 right off the bat, and then it'll get rid of this one half, so you'll end up with 76 equals the x minus the 72. 
and then add 72 to each side. So 72, you'll get 148 for the value of x. And that's degrees for this problem. Okay, moving on to the next one. So on this one, you've got two tangents. So let's take a look at what uh, the situation is here. Since we have two tangents, it, again, it's going to be the big arc because they intersect outside. Only inside do you add the big arc minus the small arc. Half of that is this angle. So 28 will equal one half of the big arc, which is 4x plus 8, minus the small arc. Be careful here, 3x plus 2. A common mistake is you say minus, and you'll say minus 3x plus 2, but this negative has to get distributed to both parts. So be careful, because that's a common mistake many of you guys um, overlook. So continuing on here, like I said, I like to multiply everything by 2, but let's just simplify what's inside the parentheses first. So this becomes 4x plus 8 minus 3x minus the 2. So 4x minus 3x gives me x, and then 8 minus a 2 will be plus 6. So now multiply both sides by 2, and I will get 56 on this side. So multiply by 2, multiply by 2. This will reduce out x plus 6, then subtract the 6 over. x will be 50 degrees. All right, let me go over one more thing that you guys will often see because they like to do these types of questions. You'll see something like this circle right here where it's these two tangent ones. So let me see if I could uh, use this tool and put a circle and draw a circle in here. And then um, if I can use the same tool, if it lets me do lines, I'm not sure if it will, but let's see. If I could put a tangent here and a tangent, oops, tangent here, let's do one more right in here and what they'll do is say they'll tell you the angle in here is say 40 degrees and then they'll just say that that's that's 40 degrees and that's x degrees and they'll say solve for x and that's all they'll give you well you got to remember if these are tangents this small piece is x this large piece is 360 minus x because the whole circle is 360. So you have to set it up this way. And so you, then you would say 40 equals 1 half of the big arc, 360 minus x, minus the small arc x, and then solve it from there. So be careful when they give you these type. It seems like, oh, I don't have enough information. But you do, because you know what this piece will be. It'll be 360 minus x. They could have put the x on this side, right over here, and then this side would be 360 minus x. So either way. So hopefully uh, this lesson uh, is not too bad for you guys. There's a lot of formulas you need to know, um, so keep those handy to make sure that you're using them as you do the problems. But the biggest thing is if they intersect outside the circle, you're going to subtract. If they intersect inside the circle, you add and then take half. All right, thanks for watching. Make sure you uh, smash that like button and uh, subscribe. See you in the next video.